In northern Iraq, Kurds are again at war, this time against other Kurds. And as the injured come back from the front lines, it's clear this is no brotherly squabble. Iraq's Peshmerga fighters last fought Saddam. Now, they march to fight Turkey's Kurdish freedom fighters, the PKK guerrillas. Iraqi Kurds are angry because the PKK has been threatening their newly won freedom. Since the Gulf War, the PKK has established military bases in northern Iraq. Now Iraqi Kurds want them out. Are you facing any resistance? They fired a couple of shots, but then they ran away. Have you reached the smoke or you passed it? We haven't reached it yet. There's a battle happening over there. Our soldiers will advance to support those already fighting. They'll organize a second attack against the PKK bases. What has really angered the Iraqi Kurds has more to do with their economy than territory. Kurds in Iraq have been operating a vast trade in contraband Iraqi fuel. In Iraq, they fill huge tanks fitted beneath their trucks with Saddam's fuel. Trucks have been crossing the border by the thousands. The fuel is taken to Turkey where it's sold. Now the PKK has begun to attack the trade. They're angry about the Iraqi Kurds' increasingly close relationship with their enemy, Turkey. Burnt out diesel lorries litter the Iraqi Turkish highway. They were attacked by the PKK guerrillas. The PKK insists Iraqi Kurds must stop trading with Turkey. In Iraqi Kurdistan, schools are again working. Since the Gulf crisis, Kurds here have moved closer than ever to some form of independence. But under economic blockade from Saddam, Turkey remains their only link with the world for both aid and trade. They say they can't risk that link and that their Kurdish brothers, the PKK, must go. We don't love war between Kurds and Kurds. And Kurds. But our aim is to, to put them in Iran, not to, not to kill or finish them. Just you want to put them out of Iraqi Kurdistan in order not to affect the relationship between the Kurds of Iraq and the Turkish government. Because, you know, the only way in order to give us assistance and help from outside Europe, America, is the way which comes from Turkey to Iraq. Just you want to put them in Iran, not to finish them. And these are the PKK fighters the Iraqi Kurds are at war with here training near one of their bases in northern Iraq. A 13-year-old PKK guerrilla sings of sacrifice and war. They devout Marxists who welcome women into their ranks. Though they're Turkish, they're fighting for an independent Kurdistan throughout Turkey and Iraq. The safe havens established to protect Iraqi Kurds from Saddam also help the PKK. Supplies and weapons were easier to come by, and the empty mountains gave them a secure base from which to mount their attacks into Turkey. They're known for their harsh tactics and the loyalty to the cause. Our people grow up alienated, even in our own beautiful country. We're oppressed. Yes, I'm sad. It's not easy to kill someone. But if it's necessary, I must do it. Even against my own family, I will do it. A PKK guerrilla band moves into Turkey. In the high mountains along the border, they've proved a difficult target for the Turks to hit. They travel into Kurdish villages where they muster support and new recruits. Turkish Kurds watched with envy as their Iraqi relations moved towards independence. It's given them hope and they flocked to join their own guerrilla army. The mountains of southeast Turkey are littered with ruined villages. Turkey allegedly forced the population of Dereve, this village, to leave. They suspected it of housing and supplying guerrillas. This man used to live here. He brought us back and told us what happened. In doing so, he risked a four-year prison sentence. But this year, a stronger PKK has been taking the war into the towns. The Turks are nervous and everyone must show his papers on demand. After two days of fighting, this is the town of Kulp. Most of its 5,000 inhabitants have fled. 
Three weeks ago, this was a busy commercial centre. Then, local people say, guerrillas hiding in this hotel shot and killed two Turkish soldiers. The army's retaliation was swift and harsh. The hotel owner was shot dead. Before, the military did warn us what would happen if they heard any gunshots. They told us they'd burn down the town. There were 35 people hiding in the hotel toilet. They put petrol on the hotel and threatened to burn it with the people inside. Instead, they took the hotel owner and they shot him. The Turkish army has a different account of events. They claim the PKK launched a full-scale attack on the town and that the devastation was caused by a full-scale battle. But if that was the case, it seems strange that the military headquarters in the centre of the town are completely unscathed. What is clear is that the Turkish government is now desperate to defeat the PKK guerrillas. In the past month it has launched its biggest ever military operation against them. In protest of the fierce attacks, the Turkish town of Cizre went on strike last week closing all shops and businesses. The authorities claim the people are forced under threat from the PKK to close the shops. The people seem to disagree. It's not the PKK who are organizing the strike. It's the Kurdish people here. It's the Turkish injustice against the Kurds here. Iraqi Peshmerga and Turkey together are killing us. The PKK are not alone. The PKK are the people. The Turkish army dominates the Kurdish town of Cizre, close to the Turkish-Iraqi border. From military bases near here, the army attacks the PKK inside Turkey and their Iraqi bases. This week, Turkish planes and helicopter gunships attacked the PKK bases in Iraq and claim to have seized control of the region. With a tradition of brutality towards their own Kurds, the Turks have found unlikely allies in the form of Iraq's Kurdish fighters. Two years ago, it was across this border that Iraqi Kurdish refugees fled from Saddam Hussein's bombs. Then Turkey's Kurds supplied them with food and blankets, weeks before the international community began to move. Now, they're killing each other. During the last fortnight, Turkey's guerrillas have been decimated in a well-coordinated pincer operation. The Turkish military and air force on one side and the Iraqi Peshmerga on the other. But this particular operation did not go so well for the Iraqis. With many Peshmerga wounded and four dead, the group returns defeated and dejected. The battle commander writes a telegram to his commanders, telling them of the unfortunate operation. The enemy has attacked our bases. The fight lasted two hours. Because we were short of supplies and ammunition, we couldn't continue. But in the long run, it's these fighters of the PKK who are outgunned and outnumbered. Surrounded by a powerful two-pronged defensive, there seems little chance of escape. The Marxist fighters must be wondering what will become of them.